Yeah, welcome back to DXB Today. Hope you've had a nice day in DXB today <laughs> and tonight, of course. Big focus on all things education, but you learned a few things out there today, that's for sure. <laughs> a big focus on education today, but looking at the changing face of education and joining us uh, to continue that conversation, the founder and the CEO of School of Humani Humanity, uh, Raya Bichari. Raya, thanks so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me. Kind of you to join us on DXB Today. And I suppose first and foremost, specifically for the benefit of our viewers. How does School of Humanity look and feel different from your average school? Is it completely online? Yes, it's completely online, uh, but we also didn't want to just digitize the existing curriculum and approach uh, to teaching and learning. Instead, we also uh, created our own unique curriculum that focuses on the knowledge, skills, and mindsets that learners most need for today's world. And our learners also learn in a completely different approach. So they learn by tackling real world challenges. So instead of courses, we run challenges every term. They work on projects instead of exams and they develop a portfolio of experiences instead of a traditional report card. Just before me, one quick question about that. How much of this is down well, to the changing mindset from the C word COVID? When COVID hit, we went from homeschooling to yeah. online learning and suddenly people became more accepting. Is that a, is that is I that a fair point? I think it's more nuanced than that because right. there was such a mix of approaches to online learning, right? Different schools took different approaches. Some learners thrive online. Some learners don't enjoy online. We also have to remember that most people experienced online schooling for the first time in a pandemic mm -hmm. where you also couldn't socialize, you couldn't go outside. So that also tainted your image of what you feel like online learning would feel like in a regular environment. So I think it's really nuanced. Nuance, but definitely I think COVID showed us that we can't have a radical upheaval in the education system within a short span of time. So then coming back to the classroom, how does the education that's received through School of Humanity look different on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so we um, follow a flipped classroom model in that we never lecture during our sessions. Our learners, uh, let's say, interact with the content in their own time in their pre-sessions. Then during the sessions, even though they're online, they're really interactive. We actually have learners from over 16 countries across five continents calling into the sessions. So it's a global classroom. They're doing um, activities, energizers, you know, lots of like active learning processes. And then throughout the week, they're working on a project to evidence their learning, to apply what they've learned in that context and some of the topics and themes they're covering on a day-to-day -day basis include designing space habitats food energy water security understanding minds so these are some of the challenges we've ran with our learners they're so amazing far. and i love just yeah. even watching you speak about it you know full of like life and <laughs> happiness and energy i i did not like school i'm not an academic whatsoever i love the idea of homeschooling or doing it online I also like what you just said about changing the words there. So you don't do exams, you do challenges. Tell me a little bit more about that because that is very interesting to me because the word exams terrifies me. I hear you. By the way, I hated school <laughs> as yeah. well. I went from being a straight A student to not really enjoying school. So I've experienced both sides of it. A big part of our mission um, is changing narratives around education, changing how we think about education. You know, we talk about all the diversity of curricula or learning models, but really we're all learning in a very similar way. We're organizing learners into ages, uh, you know, the way the school day is structured, the role of the educator, it's really similar. So a big part of changing how we think about education is changing our glossary and vocabulary about education. And I do think that needs to be done within reason, because going too far can often become you know, it's a double-edged sword. It can become really difficult to translate what we're actually talking about. Yeah. Going back to what you said earlier about how some children thrive online and some don't, I, I definitely saw it with my three kids. Some of them were like A students online and the rest were just... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but... Well, I hope they're not watching. <laughs> But how can you keep motivating the children, considering you don't have a teacher physically in the same room? How do you keep yeah. them motivated and disciplined enough to keep going for the classes online? You know, that's a question even in an in-person school. So a lot of people ask us that, and I ask them the same question, how do you keep learners motivated in a physical environment? It's the same challenge. So one of the things that we did differently was every learner has a personalized roadmap and curriculum. So they work with their educators to create a personal plan towards the curriculum outcomes. Um, and at the same time, they choose these different challenges. So for them, learning is incentivized by having a positive impact on the world. Now, that being said, like any other school, we learned very quickly, we need deadlines, we need accountability, you know, there needs to be a coaching culture to help learners stay motivated. And then in an online context, it's especially important to have parents involved and to have families 
they're much more closely integrated because we're not at home with the learners, they are. Right. So a communication channel with the parents is much more active in the online context, I would say, than let's say in a physical campus. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested by the, the phrase that you use, the glossary and how teachers can then start to integrate the online with the physical. So if I'm thinking about being a little bit selfish inside the classroom, taking elements from the School of Humanity, what can teachers do inside the classroom to then be a little bit more integrated with what you're doing? Yeah, I think that the future of education is hybrid. So uh, what I would challenge educators to think about is if you were to set everything up online first, and then augment everything in person. How would you reimagine your teaching practices, right? So it could be that, you know, and a lot of schools are starting to do this, is you do have an online platform where learners do a lot of the interactive learning and then come into the session to move higher up Bloom's taxonomy. It could be taking a cloud-first approach to how you store content. Uh, it could be taking a data-driven approach, to a, a, a more data, big data approach to how you analyze data as a school. So I find that even if you're an in-person school, if you start with that online-first approach and then think about the campus as secondary, it just changes the way you think about digital transformation as a school. Yeah. It's the changing face of education. You know, um, <laughs> really educators is. are looking different. You know, if I remember my teachers. Yeah, back, they right, did not look like you, Raya. Uh, wow. Uh, and, you know, the whole thing is changing. Um, it's, it is a fascinating subject. I'd love to know what um, the, w more about it. Unfortunately, we're out of time on this occasion. So no thank you thank so you much. We'll me. definitely revisit this topic uh, in the future. Thanks so much indeed. Um, Who's doing a DXB at 60? Hello there. Oh, you've got the card. You've got the card. I've got the card. So, um, Thomas. Yes. Uh, we, we're going <laughs> to just give you a little quiz. You know, I know you're a teacher and you dish out all the quizzes and the exams and the challenges, but this time we're going to quiz you. DXB in 60, we're going to ask you a few questions in 60 seconds. Are you ready? I think so. We'll have 60 seconds on the clock, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. If you weren't a teacher, what would you be? I think I'd have gone into social media. Oh, but that's marketing. what you do in a way. Probably marketing. Okay, fine. What is the one thing you cannot live without? Ooh, camera. Camera? Yeah. Okay. Or mobile phone. Okay. Mobile phone. Fine. Um, what's one of your hidden gems in Dubai? I really enjoy Dubai Creek Harbour. It's yeah, nice, the isn't sunset it? there. Unreal. Spot. Um, top series you can recommend this summer that you've been watching? I've been watching. Stranger Things, I've been re-watching that one. Really? That. Okay, yeah. uh, what about your top podcast recommendation? It's got to be Diary of a CEO, I always come back to that one. Really? That one, yeah. He's coming to Dubai soon as well. Uh, what about a book you're reading at the moment? I'm actually reading, it's a bit geeky, back on education, Atlas of AI. You're always learning. Yeah. Um, who would you consider is your muse? <laughs> Don't say me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would say a lovely chap called Ali Abdal. Okay. He's a YouTube. Creator. YouTube creator. All right, that is it. We are out of time. I love that. Really delve deep there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Deep. Thomas, it's been honestly genuinely super fascinating to have you. It's really nice to meet you in person after seeing you on my TikTok <laughs> for however long. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> yeah, great to have Thomas as our guest co-host. Great to have Raya Jonas as well. Thank you so much Hi. indeed for being with us. Uh, we ain't finished yet, though. Do stay with us right here on DXP Today. Mm -hmm.